to press toward the mark. And all that he had accomplished, he knew that he still needed to grow in the Lord. So God wants us to grow. And we know the signs of growth. Ephesians 4 and 14 says, as I said earlier, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every kind of doctrine by the slay of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they live in wait to deceive. But speaking, lock, wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 3 and 1, but brother, I could not speak to you as spiritual, but as unto carnal, unto even babes in Christ. See, sometimes when you don't allow yourself to grow in the Lord, you find yourself going, and don't y'all go to sleep on me, I have to teach this morning. Wake up, wake up. Turn that heat down. Many times, you find yourself going around the same mountain, the same test, and the same trial over and over again. And failing the same test and failing the same trial because of a lack of spiritual growth and maturity. See, when a tree is mature, there's fruit on it. Even in your backyard, if you plant a fruit tree, when it's mature, there's fruit on it. If the saint has reached maturity, you will find the fruit of the Spirit from Galatians 5 and 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. See, this is self-evaluation. How do you know whether you're growing or not? The things that used to make you blow up and fuss and curse and fight. Don't bother you anymore. You find yourself growing when you see the fruit of the Spirit being portrayed in your life. When you find yourself able to walk in love when you're talked about lying on, mistreated, and ridiculed, you're yet able to walk in love. We're not fruit inspectors. We're not fruit pickers. But see, God is the final judge. He sees all and he knows all and we just want to please him. Man has three dimensions. That's the spirit. The spirit is the part that is born again. The spirit is the part that gets saved. The spirit is the part that communicates with God. And then you have a soul. The soul is the mind, the will, or the intellect. The reasoning ability. That's the soul. And then you have the body because you live in a body. So we are three dimensional. Mind, that's the soul, the spirit, the part that gets born again, and the body. Now your body is going to tell you, don't you fast? That's the flesh. That's what you see here. The body says, I'm hungry. I must have some chitlins and greens and Big Macs and all that chicken. When it's time to fast or go to church, your body will say, don't go to church. Your body will say, don't come to church. Stay at home. Your body will say, tip on out even though it's on only 12, 20. That's the body. This is the part that will die and go back to the dirt and the worms and the dust. This flesh here. This body will literally take you to hell if you be, allow yourself to be led by your flesh and the body. Your soul, you can't be led by your mind. Your soul is the reason, the intellect. Your mind will speak to you. Something came to my mind that told me stay home and rest today. <laughs> See, that's your mind, that's your soul. You can't be led by that either. See, the Bible says bring your body under subjection. The Bible says present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is a reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind or your soul. So you have to renew your mind. When your mind and your imagination goes crazy and tells you to think crazy thoughts and do crazy things, you have to renew your mind with the word. You have to keep your mind staying on Jesus, and then he will keep you in perfect peace. You have to read and meditate on the word of God that your mind will become subject to the word of God. Bring every evil imagination, every thought captive, subject 
to the word of God. That thought does not line up with the word of God, so I capture it and make it line up with the word of God. We have to know what we are made up of. And we have to know who's talking and who's speaking and who's giving the instructions. Your spiritual part is the part that tells you, read your Bible. That's the spirit. Fast. Come to the shut in. Pray. That's the spirit part of me. That's the part that wants to be saved. That's the part that's trying to get you to heaven and to escape hell. That's the spirit part. I've done this before, but it bears repeating. I need mean three people. Elder T Thompson, Sister Taylor, Sister Kelly. Come here real quick. Three parts of man. Body. That's the body. Soul and spirit. Three parts. Who's the body? Soul, spirit. We have three parts, but there's a war going on. In your members, there's a daily war going on between these three parts. They don't agree. The spirit is saying, come on, let's go to church. Trying to drag the mind and drag the body. And they said, no, we're not going. We're not going. But the spirit still strives. Trying to drag them to the shedding. Trying to get them to come to pray. The spirit part. The part that God is dealing with. But the body is strong. That body is fighting. That mind is saying, I'm not going. And so most of the time, the body and the spirit, the soul realm of the mind, wins over. And they said, we won. The body won. The mind won. And we're not going anywhere. Don't tell me fast. I need my food. I need that. And then the spirit part over here, longing to be in the presence of the Lord. Of the Lord. Yeah. The spirit of man longs to be in the presence of the Lord. This is the part that's going to be saved. This is the part that's going to go to heaven. Yeah. But it's longing to be with the Lord. And then you find the body and the soul just constantly putting up a fight. Because they don't want to go. And then finally, the spirit somehow drags the body into a fast. They get on their knees. Oh, drag that body, drag that mind, and begin to pray and fast and seek the Lord. And all of a sudden, this body that had full control is now like a dead man. Been born under subjection. Body has been subdued. Body can no longer rule you because it's been denied the chicken, the hamburger, the pig. It's been through fasting and prayer, and this body can no longer rule the spirit. Bring your body under subjection. Present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Which is your reasonable spirit. And then the mind, the body's dead. Dead to itself. Dead to flesh. See, we got to die daily. Crucify this body. Kill it. Put it to death. Die now and you won't have to die later. And then we have the, the soul here, the mind. Thought, thinking all kinds of thoughts. But when they get to fasting and praying, putting this mind under subjection to the word, all of a sudden, the mind has been renewed. And the mind is saying that my mind, my mind belongs to God. And my body belongs to God. It's no longer my mind. But now I belong to God. Then all of a sudden, they get up. We got the body that's now under subjection. We got the spirit that's in control. The spirit takes the body and the mind and the spirit leads them. The Spirit is now leading them. Father, you do what I tell you to do. Man, you do what I tell you to do. We're going to heaven. I said, we're going to heaven. Come on, let's give God some praise. Come on, let's give us some praise. Now, who are you going to be led by? Your body? 
your mind, or your spirit. We ought to be spirit led. Saints ought to be spirit led. Now, we're going to go through seven quick steps on how to seek God and grow spiritually. Seven simple things. Seeking God and growing spiritually. And we're going to be doing this in the study. First thing you're going to do is study God's word every day. Don't raise your hand. How many study the Bible or read the Bible every day? Every day. 